Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a, I'm a little disappointed because we were expecting some walk-up music. Yeah. We talked what? about Come On Irene would have been the, my favorite song to come up to. Yeah, that's <laughs> Tony, do you have one? Uh, poison, Here to Party. Oh, nice. Mine would have probably been something like Live in La Vida Loca or something, you know. Awesome. Well, good afternoon, everyone. So happy to be here with you today as we celebrate the end of our 2023 20, season at uh, Championship Weekend here in Phoenix. As Steve mentioned earlier, 23, 2023 has been quite a monumental year for NASCAR as we've um, celebrated our 75th anniversary. It's been a, quite an honor um, to take some time to look back, celebrate our past, uh, how we got to where we are today, but also um, think about the next 75 years and how we'll work alongside of all of our partners to shape the next 75 years. But if the past 75 years are an indication of what the next 75 years will look like, um, I think the future is bright, and I'm excited about that. So we're uh, going to jump right in because you don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from these gentlemen. But before we do, I'd love to roll a video that shares exactly what I just touched on, um, tells the story of, of our last 75 years. Racing fans different craftsman deals throughout the season because teams can count on craftsman tools to get the job done. And now you can too. When you take advantage of the craftsman deal of the race, you'll save on the tools that'll help you power through your projects. And this deal, well, it's going fast. So scan the QR code now to get the current deal of the race. See you at the next race with another deal. Yes, sir. We're going to roll that next one. Championship on the line, your name can only take you so far. A will to win, a hunger for speed, and a whole lot of attitude. That's how to see your name in bright lights. The NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. Awesome, thank you for that. So, I want to kick it off talking a little bit about your entitlement uh, in championship races. We've got one tonight. Uh, and tomorrow in the Craftsman uh, Truck Series and Xfinity Series tomorrow. Um, this is where we'll spend some time just kind of getting your perspective leading into these uh, events. So I'm going to kick it off with a question for Tony. Tony, with the race tonight, it'll be your first since returning to entitle the Truck Series under the Craftsman banner. Talk about your feelings leading into tonight. Yeah, well, first of all, Edwin, thanks for, for having us. Sportico, thanks for having me back. Second year in a row, that's, that's crazy. Uh, I was here last year, too. But um, we are uh, bittersweet about seeing this come to, 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 to life tonight. You know, it, it seems like it was last week that we was in Daytona uh, for the first Craftsman truck race. Um, I remember uh, we had a big display out front Craftsman display, and uh, they interviewed me on MRN during the race. And before we went live, all the announcers around the track was, welcome back. You know, it's great to have Craftsman back. And, and I mean, it just gave me goosebumps. And so uh, to bring it all to life with four amazing young drivers tonight at the Craftsman 150, we just, I, I can't wait to get on stage and, and, and give that trophy away tonight. Awesome, love it. So speaking of, of your return, Stanley Black & Decker returns to the truck series in, in 23 after long run from 95 to 2008. What were the driving factors in that return? Yeah, you know, Stanley Black & Decker, we own multiple brands in the sport. So, you know, we've got the Craftsman Truck Series. We've got the DeWalt brand on Christopher Bell that he's in the final fourth. This, and uh, so, whoop, whoop, let's go Christopher Bell. Whoop, whoop. Um, we got Mac Tools. Mac Tools has been in the sport for 30 years. I don't know if you remember the Days of Th Thunder TV show. Go watch that. You'll see Mac Tools all over the place. So I've got probably the coolest job in the sport, managing brands with amazing – I've got an amazing team that works for me. Um, so, you know, with the truck series – what really was, uh, you know, intriguing to us was uh, the over-indexing with your fan base. I mean, uh, I think it was over-indexed with homeowners that, you know, done their own DIY projects. Um, that 
change their own oil on their vehicles or their, their fuel filters and, uh, and done their own lawn care. So I think the over-indexing with the fan base targeted with all of our brands, whether they're a pro, whether they're a technician that, that uses Mac tools, whether they're a, a construction pro that's using our DeWalt tools building high rises, or if you're a homeowner that you're doing your own DIY, uh, changing your own oil, whatever that may be, that's, that's the reason why we, we, we are in the sport. Love it. And I was telling Tony earlier that and I shared a picture to share proof, but I recently went on my own Craftsman binge and I went to the store and got myself an, an electric lawnmower um, and, a, and a pretty extensive tool set. Um, I consider myself a DIYer, but um, if you ask my wife, she'd, she'd beg to differ. Well, well we, if you haven't scanned the QR code yet, go scan the QR code. It'll take you to Lowe's or Ace and you can buy the deal of the race tonight uh, during, the, the, during the truck race. Awesome. Got a little plug there. I'll definitely, yeah, I'll definitely be doing that. I, like I mentioned, I want that, I want that, uh, that big toolbox. <laughs> so, Matt, this is your ninth uh, year crowning a champion in the Xfinity Series. Uh, can you talk about what that means for Comcast um, this year? And yeah, this year? and also, thank you, Sportico, and everybody uh, for having me here. This is great. I uh, hope everybody had a lot, a lot of fun last night, too. Um, it's surreal, is how I would describe the fact that this has been, you know, nine years. Tony was talking about... Thinking back to Daytona earlier this year, I think back to Daytona in 2015 and, and getting such a unique opportunity to be there for our first race and talk to the crew chiefs of all the Xfinity Series drivers, talk to the drivers themselves. And what I learned really, really quickly, uh, which I didn't understand, and I, and I still, I, I'm gro growing into this even after nine years, is how much of a relationship-driven sport this is, and I think about all of the amazing things that we as a brand have done over nine years, and I can look around the room and see many people here who are responsible for helping us push our brand forward. So, you know, you asked about nine years, it, it's surreal. I was with Wayne uh, Auten and the four drivers earlier this, this morning to toast them and wish them the best of luck. Um, I can't believe we've been doing it for this long. Why it works uh, for us is, look, the, the NASCAR season is, as many of you know in this room, is a long season. And from a brand standpoint, that, that provides opportunities, by all means, being active every single weekend. But you can also run the risk of being kind of too loud and, okay, I get it, I get it enough. But what moments like tomorrow provide to us is that big moment that is ours. And what's great about the NASCAR Xfinity Series is not that we get those moments, but it is extremely relevant to who we are as a brand. You know, you think about speed and entertainment. Those are the things that Xfinity, um, you know, stands for, you know, with, within the sport. But then the, also the thing about our series, and Tony, I think you have it going on in your series as well, is the brand identity of the series. I love this idea of the Xfinity series being that names are made here. Um, when we present the trophy tomorrow night to one of these four drivers, many of whom, you know, you think about a Cole Custer and a Justin Allgaier, they've, they've been in the sport for quite some time. So maybe their name isn't going to be made, but they're going to become a champion, and they're going to be an Xfinity Series champion. And to take that and have people like that, athletes like that, representing your brand, uh, again, I keep using the word surreal, but, you know, it's, it's something we're really proud of and um, really appreciate everybody's participation in. Thank you for that. We're going to continue talking uh, with you, Matt, here in the next few questions. I wanted to ask you, in addition to the Xfinity Series entitlement, Comcast has been a huge part of NASCAR for years, serving as a premier partner in the Cup Series, the title sponsor of the Cup Series Xfinity 500 at Martinsville Speedway, which we talked about earlier, the official internet partner of NASCAR, and founding uh, partner as well. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, um, specifically the Chicago Street Race in 23, excuse me, um, Several very different partnerships within the sport. Can you talk about your strategy and approach in NASCAR? Well, listening to that, it sounds like our strategy is just sponsor everything. <laughs> um, no, I think, look, our, our approach has been very disciplined uh, in this sport. And look, there's a lot of reasons why we've had success, right? We have a great team of people, you know, just like Tony does that I get to work with. We have a great agency partners uh, in GMR. But I think the secret to our success, honestly, has been a couple areas. The first is strategy. So we really are very disciplined in making sure that internally, the teams back um, that I get to work with understand why we do the sponsorship. And very early on, you know, in our partnership, as we're trying to galvanize teams internally to get behind us and give us help, whether that's the creative teams, the comms teams, the product teams, 
there were times where they looked at our group and said, oh, that's the group that promotes NASCAR. And we really had to make them pivot their, their thinking because it's not my job, it's not our job to promote NASCAR. That is your team's job to drive the engagement of the sport. Our job is to leverage this amazing platform that NASCAR provides, obviously, on TV and social and all of these different ways that they engage with fans to drive our relevant brand and business goals through them. So once we set up that strategy, that's allowed us to go do that list of things that you did because, like, okay, now we're going to use those platforms, Chicago, Cup Series Premier, whatever it is, to drive the brand and business. The second thing that we do that's just critically important to this and also helps us, Tony and I were talking about it, uh, outside, you know, we, we've got, I've got new leadership that has just recently started. Uh, and if you're ever with a brand and new leadership comes in, it means you've got to spend about a month selling yourself in, explaining what you do and why you do it and justifying your existence. And I think for us, the idea of measuring our partnerships, and we have 75 plus deals across the footprint. NASCAR is obviously uh, one of our largest ones, but we measure, and measure, the best, and measure, the best, and the best, and the best, sorry. Um, we measure, measure, measure everything. So we look at everything from uh, our brand KPI results. So we do detailed monthly measuring of our brand. How do prospects and our current customers feel about us as a brand because of our affiliation with NASCAR? So and we know, we've seen it, that when people are NASCAR fans, they're more likely to, to look at us as a tech leader. They're more likely to think of us as having a superior internet product, all of those types of things. The second thing we look at is the brand exposure, both through TV, but digital and social. And not just was our sign seen, but was our message you know, heard? And, and if you've ever watched an Xfinity series race, it's not a mistake that when the driver gets out of the car, he references the fact that he was as fast as Xfinity 10G. That goes into our exposure number. The third area we look at is business to business. And, and the, the people in this room do a phenomenal job in getting partners to work together. And we've driven some real business and, and revenue to our company because of we're part of the NASCAR uh, system. We look at our digital and social behavior and we look at our earned media as well. So those five things we look at across every one of our sponsorship. And we, we do that in such a even more diligent manner with NASCAR because the spend level, because of the prominence and all of those things. So our strategy and approach has been very, very disciplined and how we go about it, it's very measurable. So that when we talk to people, it's not about the Xfinity 500 winner, it's about what did we drive out of that moment. Love it, and, and, and Tony, I'm coming back to you in a second, I promise, I just got one more question from Matt here, but Chicago Street Race was an unprecedented event this year, um, and a perfect example of things NASCAR and our partners are doing to try to grow the sport and bring it to new audiences. What was so intriguing about Chicago for you, and why was it important to be heavily involved in that race and market this year? Yeah, I, uh, it's a good question. I think, one, we looked at the Chicago street race as a very innovative, innovative idea, excuse me, from, from NASCAR. And if there are innovative ideas, we want to be the brand that's a part of it, because that's who we are uh, within the NASCAR you know, ecosystem of partners. So that was one. Two was the market, right? So Chicago, we, unfortunately, we're, we're in a market right now, there's probably many of you right now that have the unfortunate situation of not living in a market where Xfinity services uh, are available. As always, we recommend moving, but if you can't do that, um, you know, one day you guys will all get to Orlando or someplace else where there's, uh, where there's our services. But Chicago's an important market for us. It's a big uh, Comcast market, so that was two. And then three, going back to what I talked about for, for tomorrow night, it was another moment, right? So again, you have race after race after race, and that's great but you have these handful of iconic moments that happen throughout the course of the season, and we wanna be a part of that. And so once we did that and recognized those three things, we then figured out, all right, well, what's our activation plan you know, behind that? And what it also presented for us is an opportunity to bring in some additional product and service messaging. So it was probably the biggest time that we leaned into our Xfinity Mobile product, the bridge that went over, I think, turn seven, Jeff can remind me uh, what it was, was Xfinity Mobile branded. Um, and then the last thing was the, you know, the fact that we were launching the 10G network and um, part of the, the sales pitch from the NASCAR guys, well, there's going to be a turn 10, so why don't we brand that thing Xfinity 10G? So we had a lot of relevance. We had a big moment in an important market in a very innovative race weekend for NASCAR. Thank you. All right, Tony, come back to you, Stanley Black & Decker. As you mentioned earlier, Stanley tools are synonymous with the truck series, both being tough, bold, and proud. As you look to crown your first champion tonight as part of your new entitlement, what were your goals in this first year? Yeah, you know, this was our first time at uh, going into a, a entitlement, in, entitlement uh, series, and so it was all new to us. And uh, 
So we went to work and the deal of the race, we come up with the deal of race and, and we started that, you know, late in the process. But the first thing that our, our, our retailer said, Lowe's and, and Ace, which it's where you can buy most of the Craftsman product is why NASCAR? Um, after the Daytona 500, after the, the week, the, the, the start of the season at Daytona, the truck race on that Friday night, we ran the, the deal of the race for the first time and their websites blew up. So th that next month they said, we love the truck series. And I said, thank you. Um, but, um, you know, so our, our, our first goal was is to take people from awareness. You know, everybody knows Craftsman. It's an icon iconic brand to consideration. And that the, the deal of the race kind of did that. And then actually selling them product, which the deal of the race did that. When you scan the QR code, scan the QR code. That, that'll send you to the websites. We track all of that. We track every day too, Matt. Um, so the first of all was, you know, taking people from awareness to consideration to purchase, number one. But number two, we, we had a big um, dinner with all the drivers and owners at Daytona, and we spoke to them before the race in Daytona. And one of the things we wanted to do was help them build their platform. Um, you know, I, I watch a lot of podcasts. One of the biggest podcasts out there in NASCAR, I'm not going to say who it was, they talked in the last couple of weeks about star power. And they said that, you know, sponsors nowadays really don't bring star power to their drivers. They need to have me on that podcast because I'm going to disagree with them because we took a lot of drivers in the deal of the race and got their them visibility that they would not get on, an, on a commercial um, um, that we put together. Uh, we, we, we do a, a lot of promotions uh, Grand M Fingers doing a lot right now with an overdrive product that we're doing. Uh, a lot of social out there. Um, Carson Hosefar, he's been in a lot of our our, our uh, deal of the races. He's stepping into a cup seat next year. So now I'm not saying that was because of us, but that was one of our goals is to get these drivers, these young drivers, visibility um, to. Um, to, to, to move on to the Xfinity Series or to move on to the Cup Series. So our first, that, that was our biggest goals. You know, how do we get people to buy Craftsman product? And number two is how do we help these drivers build their platforms so they can move on with their careers and, and be successful? And, and I can tell you, we had a photo shoot last week. Charlotte Van did it. Uh, Carson Hosevar was in um, Christmas sweaters and pajamas um, uh, that we're going to be promoting on social in the next month. So these drivers will do just about anything for you at their young age. And when they make it to Cup, I don't know about that. But, uh, mm -hmm. but, but we're using these drivers as much as we can to prom promote our brands. Love it. I, I just want to clarify, when you say Van was doing it, was he was actually the one behind the camera? Uh, no, he was just there making sure the Christmas tree was there and, uh, okay. and the, the stuff got there. And typical van, just typical, supervising yeah, from yeah, a distance. Got sweet. It. <laughs> All right, so I know we talked a little bit about Chicago with, with Matt earlier. I just want to ask you a question specific to that as well. Um, obviously, huge opportunity for you. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you activated around that event? Yeah, when Chicago came up, we was excited about it. New market, new fan base. Um, and one of our biggest retailers in Ace, their headquarters is there. So for uh, 17 years now, we have ran a program called Racing for a Miracle. Um, and we run, uh, uh, we, we, we partner with Ace. Um, we do a special paint scheme for Children's Hospital because uh, that's their foundation. Um, and if the driver wins, uh, we donate a million dollars to CMN hospitals through the Ace Foundation. So that was a big deal for us. And we led, I don't know if everybody remembers this, but uh, we was leading that race until the pit, st uh, pit cycle started and they cut the race 25 laps. Who, who uh, is, is anybody in here, who cut that race 25 laps? But, uh, um, but anyway, Ace, you know, it was an opportunity to get their C-level executives to a race. Uh, I know the first panel talked about bringing in new fan bases. We created a lot of new fans at ACE uh, from their C-suite level because they was there at that race. It was a tough day. Everybody uh, had to fight the rain, but once we got the race started, 
it was, it was an amazing day. So it was a great opportunity for us to partner with one of our retailers and uh, make a big, big deal about the Chicago race, Racing for a Miracle, and, and Craftsman. Love it. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. And, and I, think, I think it was Mother Nature that cut the race short. Um, based on what you learned in year one, Tony, what are your plans for 2024 and beyond to leverage the relationship as much as possible? Yeah, I think the biggest thing this year was a learning for us with our brand teams. And um, we was drinking from a fire hose this year. Uh, got started late, but they finally got it. And, you know, that's the reason why that we're doing so much content right now around product promotions, overdrive, and things like that. Uh, you'll see that throughout the year next year with um, in spring with Lawn and Garden, um, toolboxes, things like that will promote. Um, and um, so Dill the Race 2.0 is going to be a big deal for us. It probably won't be the deal of the race. It'll probably be the, the deal of the month next year because uh, they, they pulled their hair out with inventory with two different retailers. But uh, so deal of the, the month 2.0 um, and then uh, promotions, like I said. And then we're going to tie a, you know, win the ultimate garage sweepstakes to the deal of the race. So when you go on, you go to the website, you purchase, um, or you just go on to the website, you're going to get an opportunity to sign up, get your garage completely uh, decked out with Craftsman tools, and what a chance to come to the Craftsman 150 here next year in Phoenix. Love it. Thank you. All right, so we're getting to our final few questions. Hope we're doing okay on timing. Um, if not, someone just come yank me off the stage, please. Uh, so a few questions for both of you. Um, you can answer in any order you like, but maybe since you've had a break, Matt, maybe you go first on this one. In addition to being an important partner to NASCAR, you each have significant partnerships with multi multiple teams and drivers. You brought that up today during your conversation. Can you talk about those partnerships and how they complement your efforts um, at the league level? Yeah, um, I talked earlier about how this was a relationship-driven sport, which is good. It also provides us the opportunity to meet a lot of different people who have other opportunities for us in the space to drive, drive, uh, excuse me, drive our voice through. Um, we work with uh, a handful of drivers. Uh, Kevin Harvick has been a, a partner, uh, 2311. Uh, we've had a very big partnership with them this year. We work very closely with uh, Dale Jr. and Dirty Mo Podcast and all of the work there. And what it does for us is it gives us a, a authentic, authentic voice to the fans. So it's one thing for um, our 30-second TV spots or our broadcast integrations to reinforce our message. It's something completely different when Tyler Reddick is driving the Xfinity car and he's talking about you know, the, the value of it. And he's active on social the week before and he's going to a retail store appearance to drive uh, fan engagement. It's completely different when Dale Jr. on his podcast is talking about how he's an Xfinity customer and he loves the, ser the service. Or when he's surprising one of our customers at Charlotte Motor Speedway and taking them around in laps uh, just for being a customer. The, the NASCAR governing body and our partnership with them can't do those unique experiences but partnerships with teams and personalities like Dale allow us to do that, where it becomes a more engaging and more authentic type of message to the fans. In addition, it allows us to hyper-target certain fans. So for example, 2311, we pick them specifically. We had opportunities to work with all the different teams, but we looked at 2311 and saw a group that was pushing forward. They were doing new things. They were trying to challenge the status quo. And we looked at that and said, that's the type of brand we want to be aligned with. And our partnership with them this year has, has really leaned into that. Um, last week at the Xfinity 500, they came to us maybe about a month, two months beforehand and said, hey, we've got some inventory and availability on Bubba's car. Let's do some type of co-promotion and get you guys on the car. No other team would come to us and say, let's do co-promotion. It would be, hey, here's the price tag, and then let's do something on the car. And there was a mutual benefit to us working with them. So last week, uh, Bubba actually, the hood of his car, had selfies of 65 Xfinity customers driving around the track as part of our loyalty you know, uh, program. Again, as great as our partnership is with NASCAR, we can't do those types of things without these ancillary relationships. Absolutely. You want me to repeat the question, or you got it? Yeah. No, no, I, I've got it. So. Um well, we're with several different teams out there, too, with our brands. Um, you, you was talking about 2311. Um, 
And, and what these teams are doing now, 2311, Trackhouse, these are actually kind of marketing companies that race, you know? It, it, back 25 years ago, it was race teams trying to market. But I think a lot of these teams now are, are marketers, and they're just racing. And so that's, that's really appealing to a brand like Mac Tools that has been in the sport for 30 years. I think my first race was 96 and we've been with teams since, you know, the 80s. Um, and so, you know, we're with 2311, we're with Hendrick, and we're going to win tomorrow night the race regardless, or on Sunday, uh, regardless with one of our brands, as long as the 12 doesn't win. But, um, uh, but each, each one of our brands is targeted to a different audience. And um, like our partnership with Joe Gibbs Racing with the DeWalt car, we take in what we, what we call is, is an EUL, an end user logo. So on the hood of the 20 car on Sunday, we've got a customer's logo in between the hood pins and that car is running for a championship. There's not a whole lot of companies that can do that with a customer's logo. So we just get a lot of different opportunities with the different teams that we're with. The, the truck series with, with, with NASCAR brings us opportunities to promote the brand and, and sell product. And um, that's kind of why we're in the sport is because uh, so many different demographics targeted to so many of our brands, different customers, whether they're the pro, whether they're, they're DIYer, or whether they're a, uh, a, a, a plumber, electrician. We ran a lot of cars this year. I don't know if you've seen the 20 car, but we ran a plumber car. Um, I don't know, there's a, the plumbers union has got to be the biggest union out there. There's millions of plumbers out there, but we ran a plumber's car, an uh, electrician car, um, a safety car, concrete car. So all of those different demographics that we was able to target those um, um, fan bases. Love it. Hopefully next year you'll run a DIY car and just put my face on it. We could do that. <laughs> all right. Finally, what is the one thing about partnering with NASCAR that most excites your brand and how it is unique in helping drive your business forward? I'll take it. Um, I'm going to point to two different things that we get to do with NASCAR that I don't think we do quite as much with any other partner um, that we have. And it's all predicated on kind of my answer to the question earlier, which is we, we know exactly how to take advantage of the platform. And we execute that. It took a few years, but now we've got that machine going. And so the two areas where we've expanded to that, that we don't do as well with other partners is one in the form of customer loyalty. So we launched a program um, two or three years ago now called Xfinity Rewards. And it's a way for us to thank our customers. They're the ones that allow us to do this sponsorship because of their trust in us. And so NASCAR, if you've ever bring somebody new to a race, right, their, their first thing is always, wow, the access that you can get as a fan is amazing. And we wanted to take that and give that back to our customers and, and show an appreciation uh, to them. I'm not sure if you know, but sometimes cable brands aren't the most loved brands by people. And so if we can make sure that our 32 million customers understand that the things that we do in this space are because of them and we can thank them. So that's materialized itself in obviously ticket giveaways and suite access and garage tours and VIP uh, access and all of those types of things, driver meet and greets. But last week at the Xfinity 500 and again tomorrow, uh, Xfinity customers will be given the command to start the engines, as well as you know, somebody will wave the green flag to start. That's something that nobody else can do other than us. So the loyalty piece and what we're able to do from an engagement piece is one. The second thing is what we've done in the community impact space. It was clear on day one when we joined NASCAR that the concept of giving back to the communities where we race, live, and work was a shared um, characteristic between Comcast and, and NASCAR. And so we're really proud of the fact that this is also year nine of the Comcast Community Champion of the Year Award, in which we recognize three people within the industry. So if anybody's got a hard card, you're eligible for this award that is giving back uh, to the community. And so um, we'll honor three, uh, we have three finalists that we've just recently announced. Uh, Max Siegel, Jessica Friesen, and Ryan Vargas are our three. If you go to comcastcommunitychampion.com, you can watch those amazing stories. And each of them will get a, a contribution of $30,000 to their charity and the winner will get $60,000. We'll, we'll crown the winner in Nashville. But what's great is after nine years of this program, we're gonna go over $1 million donated to 25 different NASCAR-affiliated charities. So I look at those two things and say, look at the way we've been able to impact our customers and show appreciation, and look at the way we've been able to impact the community 
and our partnership with NASCAR allows us to do that, and there's not many other platforms that do it at the scale that we can with them. Thank you. Who asked for it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, I, I, guess, I guess we went over on our time. I had at least another 30 minutes worth of questions, but um, thank you gentlemen so much for joining us today and sharing uh, such great insight. I hope you all have enjoyed that as well. I, do, I, do, I would be remiss if I didn't just um, say that I, I do appreciate you so much. We at NASCAR appreciate our partners so much because we talked a little bit about the last 75 years and, and honestly the next 75 won't happen uh, if it's not for, for our great partners and, and you doing uh, what we do along uh, together. So appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you.